¿Qué pedo? They say, with a grin or a frown. A phrase that's as strange as it is renowned. It means, what fart? But don't be confused. It's done about smells. It's how it is used. When greeting a friend after quite a long while, ¿Qué pedo? You shout, with a laugh and a smile. But when something odd makes your mind start to race, ¿Qué pedo? You say, with a look on your face. And when someone's angry and wants to fight, ¿Qué pedo? You ask, ready to take flight. It's all in the tone, whether playful or snide. ¿Qué pedo? Is versatile with nothing to hide. So next time you're puzzled or want to connect, give ¿Qué pedo? a try. It'll have an effect. From greetings to brawls, it's the phrase for the day. Just remember, my friend, how to use it the right way. ¿Qué pedo? Coffee and Headlines is brought to you by the generous support of our viewers and the following community partners. Best Court Cutting TV, Bravo's Restaurant Bar, Joint Boutique Hotel and Cowork, Puerto Vallarta Neurofeedback, Puerto Vallarta Owners Reps, Oculto, and Siam Cocina Thai. Thank you for your support and thank you for supporting our community partners. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning get-together live here on Facebook, where we exchange ideas about Puerto Vallarta, we exchange news, we exchange headlines, stories, questions, and whatnot, all with one purpose, to connect better with our city, to connect better with each other as a community of English-speaking locals. So if you find something you are looking for here, stick around, grab your favorite beverage, on this morning of Tuesday, Tuesday morning, September 17, we have a few news items and a few FYI upcoming events that I want to share with you. It's interesting to see that it's only September and some performers are already posting events for the month of November. How exciting uh, to see that the pace of our city changes and shifts from summer to winter and fall and whatnot. So I am feeling the feels, the good feels because of that. And of course, que pedo way, que pedo. That's the expression of the day. If you want to shock your grandmother, your mother, your father, don't use it on the, no, no, don't use it at the living room at the dining room table. But if you run into a friend, like I'm running into Bronica here, ¿Qué pedo, güeyes? ¿Qué pedo? <laughs> uh, and yes, you know, I mean, Luisa says we could say, ¿Qué fart? I don't know. It's just one of my favorite expressions. It's rude, but it's fun. And having fun with Spanish is one of my favorite pastimes. I am rambling. Let's get on with the news. <laughs> okay, so a successful Independence Day parade took place yesterday with close to 5,000 people sipping out to the streets in Emiliano Zapata and El Centro to watch hundreds of local school children as they marched on without incident. And this pretty much concluded the official Independence Day celebrations, although all kinds of activities continue to take place throughout the rest of the month. And of course, all those Mexican nationals that came to enjoy our city for a long weekend are probably gone by today. So we're back to business as usual. And I'm always regretful that I don't get a chance to see these parades because they always happen while I'm broadcasting. Well, maybe one of these days we'll play hooky and we'll go film the parades. Now, if you're a beachgoer, I have excellent news for you. The Westin and the Marriott Hotels, well, they're beaches, actually, 
have been awarded the Blue Flag Certification. This is the most important of its kind for excellence in sustainability. This is excellent news, as in addition, both hotels have really attractive day pass options for locals to enjoy. And if you ask me, if you are in Puerto Vallarta, this is the best time of year to day pass at a local resort. And then I have good news about the Puerto Vallarta Iguanas. They actually beat the Mazatlán Marinos this past Saturday with a 92-72 to 72 score at the Municipal Stadium Complex. And we seem to have found a better source of information about our city's very own basketball team. I had previously been looking at their official Facebook page but that one does not seem to be well administered or kept up to date. But somebody kindly alerted me to the fan page on Facebook, which seems to have up-to-date information, as you will see shortly after the weather break. And speaking of weather, let's take a look at what's going on out there. Uh, ooh. Snarky Weatherman says, that cloud looks like a very angry duck. I had not heard that one before, but boom, boom, why not? 29 degrees out there, humidity is low. Well, 66%. That's not so bad. And of course, our forecast for today says it's going to be a humid day with partly cloudy skies. There's a chance of rain of only 10%, a high of 32, and a low of 24. Then tomorrow, Wednesday, we'll have a humid with partly cloudy skies uh, kind of day. A chance of rain of only 21%, a high of 32, and a low of 23. And then on Thursday, we can expect mostly, mostly cloudy skies in the morning with thunderstorms in the afternoon. A chance of rain of 64%, a high of 32, and a low of 24. So from the looks of it, it's going to be a dry week. Let us see what is going on in terms of the second block of information. I have a couple of fun events for your consideration. Let me set them up on my screen, and there we go. Our new friend, Agus Etileda, who is a rock star, a Spanish instructor. She's not a rock star, I'm just, well, she's a rock star in my book. She is a tour guide, a Spanish instructor, an actor, and a really funny lady from Argentina that I had the pleasure of interviewing a few weeks ago in the spotlight. She is having a fun event tomorrow. Even the name I like, Spanish Night Out with Agus Eiti Leda. The meeting is at a bar tomorrow at 6 p.m. called Aquí Estoy Bar. And I don't know exactly what the event is going to be about, but if it has to do with learning Spanish and it has to do with spending time with Agus, I am sure it's going to be amazing. We loved her and I can't wait to get her back in the spotlight just to continue discussing naughty words in Argentina that are perfectly innocent in Mexico and vice versa. I also, you know, speaking of, here is an event by the Iguanas. Now we know ahead of time that they're going to be playing this Saturday at 7.30 p.m. here in town against the uh, Tequila Agaveros, which is an agavero is a person that um, grows agave, duh. So uh, if you want to go and cheer this Saturday, I might actually be able to go. I don't think I have anything planned for Saturday evening. So this is at 7.30 p.m. at the Municipal Stadium. There is a small amphitheater there, which is where the basketball court is located. And then I have to tell you about a dear friend who was very pivotal in the in the encounter between the Aztec and the Spaniard. She played a pivotal role there. And after doing that, she proceeded to procreate and she gave birth to the great grandmother of the Energizer Bunny. And she's still going on. Our dear friend, Gouda Gabor, is coming back to Puerto Vallarta in November. 
we love everything that Gouda puts together and she's going to come back to Nacho Daddy featuring a special guest each week. We love what she brings to the table. We love what she puts in her mouth. Last year it was Cheetos and this year she seems to be determined to develop a drinking problem. So if you want to have a great night in town with one of the best most consistent, everlasting, charming, extraordinary, sometimes difficult, Gouda Gabor. I totally recommend this. And if you're watching, my dear, I love you with my elbows and the rest of my upper body, and I cannot wait to see you. And now, moving on to the totally mindless, unrelated uh, to Puerto Vallarta, I came across this gorgeous photograph of the lobby at the Gran Hotel de la Ciudad de Mexico. That's all Tiffany stained glass you're seeing on the ceiling, by the way. This is a beautiful historic hotel located in the heart of Mexico City, not far from the Zócalo. And a visit to that part of Mexico City would be incomplete without sauntering into the lobby and checking out this spectacular spectacular, spectacular, historic building. I thought I would share it, even though it has nothing to do with Puerto Vallarta. Also, nothing to do with Puerto Vallarta, but much to do with Mexican culture. Pedro Paramo is coming to Netflix. This is one of the masterpieces of Latin American uh, literature. It's going to be a mini series. It is a novel by Mexican author Juan Rulfo that tells the story of Juan Preciado who travels to the ghost town of Comala to fulfill a promise to his dying mother to find his estranged father Pedro Paramo. Upon arrival Juan discovers that the town is inhabited by spirits including the memories and voices of people who live there. And Pedro Paramo, of course, he is a powerful and ruthless landowner who dominated Comala during his life, leaving a legacy of corruption and oppression. So the novel explores themes of death, guilt, memory, and the consequences of unchecked power. Its fragmented nonlinear structure and the use of magical realism makes it a haunting reflection on life and the afterlife in rural Mexico. And just in time for Day of the Dead. I forget the exact date in which it's premiering, but this is a Mexican novel that is a must read, and I'm sure it is available in English. And of course, it'll be fascinating to watch the Netflix adaptation. Last but not least, just a quick reminder, tomorrow in the spotlight, we will have local author Giga Watts. She's going to be telling us uh, about her latest journal book called Unlimited Mindset, a daily manifestation journal. This is an open invitation to her. Well, she's already accepted the invitation, but if you know of anyone that wishes to promote whatever they're up to, either in person at the Joan Pucci Hotel, or if they want to connect to us by way of a webcam, today is the last day which we're welcoming guests for tomorrow's broadcast. So please take a look at the links in the show notes if you want to participate. And even before I rewind my comment tape, thank you for the reminder, Carmen. This is, a, thank you so much, so helpful. Um, do remember that Oculto is doing Chiles and Nogada to go every Saturday of this month. But if you want them this Saturday, you must pick the, you must place your order today. The Thursday is the deadline for placing an order the following um, 
for picking up the order of chiles and nogada the following Saturday. So there you have it. Thank you, Carmen, for that reminder. And uh, let's see. Good morning, good afternoon to everyone. Do, 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 do. Yes, Ronald. It's so funny because for those of you that come and go uh, for several parts of the year, it's interesting because at my end, a lot of my friends that go away are starting to come back and that always feels good. Uh, we get caught up with each other and so forth and so on. So the energy shifts in town and that's always nice to appreciate. Uh, let's see what else we have. Oh, definitely. If this has to do with que pedo, it definitely sounds better in Spanish. And there are variations. Should I say the really? Yeah, I will say it. The really gory, not gory, nasty. Okay, I'm just going to say it. Que pedo te gorgorea en el culo. And that means what fart is swarming around your ass. See, in English, it's not fun. But in Spanish, after a couple of beers, it's really fun to say these things. Just saying. Uh, hope you got my email, Paco. It pertains to the iguanas. Um, I haven't checked it, but I will be so very happy to check my inbox right after the broadcast. Mark, thank you very much. Um... Oh, that's a complicated question with a complicated answer. Uh, let me see if I can explain. In Mexico, we celebrate Day of the Dead, which is not the same thing as Halloween. Halloween happens, I think it's on the 31st of the month. I forget. A lot of cities, particularly those in Mexico that have been strongly influenced by North America, well, by U.S. culture, uh, celebrate Halloween here in town it's a mix it's a mixture of both um, children usually go out with a little uh, plastic pumpkin and they go out asking for what they call their calaverita or their little skull which is you know you can throw either cookies or candy or money into their Halloween basket um, so there is an overlap but as a Mexican national, it's important to me to always clarify the distinction between one and the other. And I'm happy to announce for those of you that are curious about um, Day of the Dead, I will be presenting my Day of the Dead presentation again at the joint a couple of days before Day of the Dead, actually. We were very successful with that presentation last year because it included the legend, the history, the culture, the traditions, the music that are related to Day of the Dead, the whole explanation of the mythology and whatnot. So I'll keep you posted. I know the date. I just don't have it in front of me, but I'll start making promotional posters for all my music presentations, which are already scheduled between now and December. Let's see. Barbara, it's my pleasure. Whenever it's time to promote anything Mexican, you know, I love doing it. And Pedro Paramo is a must read. And I am sure the novel will be, the adaptation will be fascinating. Uh, which country film pa uh, Pedro Paramo, Argentina or Mexico? I don't know, Angelica. I don't know where the production was filmed. Um, but I'm sure Google sh should have a good answer for that. Uh, Purim Pam Pum. Hey, Betsy. Pedro Paramo is brilliant. I've read it twice, but one translation was better than the other. If interested, please send me a direct message and I'll dig out my notes. That is so awesome. Um, that's the first thing I want to try. The chiles and nogada. Sorry if I spelled it wrong. Um, they are seasonal, Laura. I forget when you arrive here, um, but just be mindful of that. I hope you're not disappointed if you come to Puerto Vallarta and you find that they're not easy to find. They are seasonal and uh, hopefully you will find them. And... Da -da. Oh, this is so cute. Kathy says, someone in my trailer park set off one single firework last night around 9 p.m. I decided 
it was because of Mexican Independence Day. And why not? I declare that it was for Mexican Independence Day. Kathy and Viva Mexico to you. And with this, we wrap up today's broadcast of Coffee and Headlines. I thank you, as always, for your feedback, your comments, your suggestions, your ideas. I'm going to publish the show notes and pray, keep my fingers crossed, that the link will work properly on Facebook. Yesterday, I realized that using Facebook on my Mac doesn't let me click on the link, but using Facebook on my phone does let me use the link that I publish beats me. It's one of those Facebook freaky things, but hopefully you'll be able to connect with the show notes. Have an amazing day and I'll see you again tomorrow morning.